Info Plus for genuine information. EITM College Kumaltar, bringing the future of education. Kathmandu World School, education for a better future. National College of Computer Studies (NCCS) for Najul Marg, Kathmandu. Info Plus for genuine information. An investment in knowledge pays the best interest. शिक्षा र ज्ञानमा गरेको लगानीले सबैभन्दा धेरै ब्याज चुक्ता गर्छ कि तपाईं यो भनाईमा सहमत हुनुहुन्छ यदि सहमत हुनुहुन्छ भने आउनुहोस् अबको आधा घण्टा कार्यक्रम इन्फो प्लस लाई समय दिनुहोस् नमस्कार म सदीक्षा श्रेष्ठ इन्फो प्लस को नियमित प्रस्तुता एक सातापछि देश विदेशका शैक्षिक गतिविधि रिपोर्ट र कुराकानी लिएर उपस्थित भइसकेकी छु यहाँहरूलाई स्मरण गराऊ कार्यक्रम इन्फो प्लस हरेक सोमबार राति साढे नौ बजे र विभिन्न समयमा पुनः प्रसारण हुने गर्दछ टिभी प्रसारणपछि कार्यक्रम इन्फो प्लस युट्युब च्यानल फेसबुक र अन्य सामाजिक सञ्जाल मार्फत समेत हेर्न सक्नुहुन्छ यहाँहरूले आउनुहोस् आजको कार्यक्रम सुरुवात गरौँ इन्फो प्लस यही शुक्रबार देशैभर स्थानीय निर्वाचन हुँदैछ अर्को हप्ताको एपिसोड प्रसारण हुँदासम्म नयाँ जनप्रतिनिधि निर्वाचित हुने क्रम सुरु भइसकेको हुनेछ हामी यो कार्यक्रममा राजनीतिक कुरा खासै गर्दैनौँ तर राजनीतिले असर नगरेको कुनै पनि क्षेत्र हुँदैन तसर्थ हामी यति मात्रै भन्छौँ देश बनेर भनेर नेतालाई धारे हात लगाउँदै गाली गर्नुभन्दा आफ्नो संवैधानिक अधिकार प्रयोग गरेर सही व्यक्ति छान्न पाउने यो अवसरको भरपूर सदुपयोग गर्नुहोस् म त आफ्नो अधिकार प्रयोग गर्छु तपाईँनी इन्फो प्लस निर्वाचन एक उत्सव हो सरकारले उक्त दिन सार्वजनिक बिदा दिएको पनि छ यसमा भन्नु केही छैन तर तिस कति हुने निर्वाचनको बहानामा काठमाडौँका केही ठूला भनिएका विद्यालयले तेइस गते अर्थात एक हप्ता अघिबाटै बिदा दिन थाले कहिले कोविड महामारीबाट भर्खरै सुचारू हुन थालेको स्कुल र लयमा फर्किन लागेका बालबालिकाहरूलाई मन लाग्दी बिदा दिने तर शुल्क भने लिन नछाड्ने यस्तो निर्णयबाट अभिभावकहरू रुष्ट बनेका छन् हेरौँ एक रिपोर्ट इन्फो प्लस शिक्षामा गरेको लगानी कहिले पनि खेर जाँदैन भनिन्छ यति मात्र होइन मानिसको सफलताको मापन पनि ऊ कत्तिको शिक्षित छ भन्ने आधारमा गरिन्छ तर अहिले औपचारिक शिक्षा प्रदान गर्ने ठाउँ कमाई गर्ने बाटो बनेको छ जसले गर्दा शिक्षा यति महँगो बनेको छ कि अधिकांश बाबु आमाले बाल बच्चा पढाउन निकै सकस खेप्नु परेको छ एक त शिक्षा यत्तिकै महँगो त्यसमाथि पनि केही विद्यालयले त महिनौँ बिदा गर्दा पनि अनावश्यक शुल्क उठाउने गरेका छन् यसरी बिना कारण विद्यालय बन्द गर्नाले कोर्स सक्न गाह्रो भयो भन्दै एक्स्ट्रा क्लासको नाममा पनि फेरि दुःख दिने गरेको गुनासो अभिभावकहरूको छ क्रम छ यो बिदाको क्रममा के देखियो भने कोर्स सकेको हुँदैन जाँच आइसकेको हुन्छ अनि त्यसको लागि कोचिङ एक्स्ट्रा हुन्छ यता अभिभावकले स्कुलको ड्यु फी तिर्ने कि कोचिङको पैसा तिर्ने डबल मारमा छ अभिभावक कोभिडका कारण लामो समयसम्म भौतिक रूपमा कक्षा सञ्चालन गर्न सम्भव भएन वैकल्पिक माध्यम यानी अनलाइन माध्यमबाट पठन पाठन पनि भएकै हो तर प्रभावकारिता भने खासै नदेखिँदा र केही विपन्न वर्गका विद्यार्थीहरूले उपकरणको अभावमा अनलाइन क्लास नै लिन नपाउँदा पनि शुल्क भने पूरा असुल गरेकोमा अभिभावकहरू रुष्ट छन् स्थिति सामान्य भएर कक्षा सञ्चालन हुन थालेसँगै विद्यार्थीहरू पनि लयमा फर्किन थालेका थिए तर स्थानीय चुनावको नाममा फेरि पनि केही विद्यालयहरू तेइस चौबिस गतेदेखि नै बन्द गरिएका छन् यसो हुँदा एक त विद्यार्थीहरूको पढाइप्रतिको लगावमा ह्रास आउने र अर्कोतिर फेरि विभिन्न बहानामा अनावश्यक शुल्क तिर्न बाध्य हुने चिन्ता अभिभावकहरूको छ कोभिडको बेलामा पनि तिन चार महिना चाहिँ स्कुलहरू बन्द भयो त्यो समयमा चाहिँ अनलाइन क्लास पढाउने भन्ने कुरा भएको थियो अनलाइन क्लास कतिको पहुँचवालाहरूले हुनेसम्म नेटको सुविधा हुनेसम्म त अनलाइन क्लास पढेको नै होला अब अनलाइन क्लासको नेटको सुविधा नहुने ठाउँमा गरिब दुखीहरूले त अनलाइन क्लास नपढेको ठाउँमा पनि त्यसमा पनि यिनीहरूले फिस चाहिँ अब 
यसरी सरकारले तोकेको समय भन्दा अघि नै विद्यालयहरू बन्द गरिनु उचित नभएको तर्क केही विद्यालय सञ्चालकहरूको छ राज्यले चाहिँ 28 गते देखि विद्यालयहरू बन्द गर्ने र सबैलाई एउटा चुनावमा चाहिँ जो भोट हाल्ने वातावरण जुन बनाउन गइरहेको छ यस सन्दर्भमा मलाई के लाग्छ भने यो शिक्षण संस्थाहरूलाई अगाडि देखि नै हामीले तेईस चौबीस बड़ नहीं बंद कर पर्ने उचित मैं लगे क्या भादा खेल सरकार ने नहीं घोषणा कर अट्ठाइस गति देखि रहा चुनाव को एक दुई दिन अगड़ी चाहे संबंधित ठाव में पुग्न पर्ने रहागे एट चुनाव को वातावरण बना पर्ने अवस्था होना सो हदसम ठीक है तर अगड़ी नहीं देखी अब तेईस चौबीस गति देखि ना बंद कर चाहे एटा विद्यार्थी को एटा सीकाई रो अ भर्खर भर्खर चाहिए जो शैक्षिक सत्र सुरू हो विद्यार्थी नया विद्यार्थी जो ढंग उन्नी एडजस्ट कर पर्ने हो रिकाई जोड़न पर्ने हो तो बच्चा वंचित राखे विद्यार्थी वंचित राखे शिक्षक वंचित राखे अगड़ी देखि ना एटा चाहिए बिदा दिए विद्यालय बंद कर उचित जो मैं चुनाव हमी सब को लगी उत्सव हो तर इस बहाना में एक हफ्ता अगि नई विद्यालय बंद कर उचित नियमन करमन अभिभावक र सरोकार वाला को भनाई इन्फो प्लस हिमालय टेलीजन एचडी में आज के बार समय आने कार्यक्रम इन्फो प्लस हे मीक्षा श्रेष्ठ यहाँ संग एक व्यापारिक विश्राम पुनः उपस्थित होने कार्यक्रम इन्फो प्लस में तिम्रो साइकल पछाड़ी कुदे थकाए तिमी दुख्ता मैं झन धे दुख तिमी कटन कैंडी कि आपूलाएं कहीं रिशाए गाली करें कहीं फिर तिमी हुर्क्या तर मैं था छोरी मेरे कांध में बसर एरोप्लेन उड़ाने तिमी आज कांध में कांध मिला हिड़न सकने भैस कलेज आप छाने करियर को पूरा करने भैस आई एम सो प्राउड अफ यू छोरी तिम्रो हर एक डिशीजन में आई एम अलवेज विथ यू एआईटीएम कॉलेज खुमलदार ब्रिंगिंग द फ्यूचर ऑफ एजुकेशन द वर्ल्ड हैज बिकम अ ग्लोबल विलेज एवरीथिंग अबाउट आवर लाइफस्टाइल टुडे इज ग्लोबल This is how globalization has impacted our daily lives. In a nutshell, you can see how globalization has brought increasing connectedness across nations, especially with the onset of digitalization. The phone you are using now, the clothes you are wearing, and the things around you. Each one of them comes from a different country. To make it possible, there is a huge gap that needs to be filled, and that is where international business management comes in. Over the last few years, international trade has completely transformed the global economy. Today, about one fourth of total global production is exported. Our international business management program equips students to deal with different culture, business environment, and dynamic challenges. Additionally, as a part of our exposure program, students will experience a real-world scenario at the University of Thai Chamber of Commerce. It's time to go international with your ideas. Think globally, act locally. Welcome to my world. Welcome to Kathmandu World School.
give your child the best of the world right here in Kathmandu. Hope to see you soon. Kathmandu World School. Education for a better future. National College of Computer Studies, NCCS, College of IT and Management is a highly professional and experienced college based in Kathmandu, which was established in 1999. For further details, National College of Computer Studies, Patnajul Marg, Kathmandu. Info Plus. Break Pachi Punaswagat Gordatsu, Abaku Kramma, Orko Marmas Pashi Report, Prasthut Gordatsu. बिहान खायो बेलुकी के खाऊ भन्ने अवस्थाका व्यक्तिहरु दिन रात नभनी जस्तो सुकै काम गर्न विवश छन् उनीहरुको एउटै सोच छ आफूले दुख कष्ट भोगेर पनि बच्चाहरुको भविष्य राम्रो बनोस् ठेला गाडा चलाउने देखि भारी बोक्ने सम्म र मकै पोल्ने देखि सामान्य मजदुरी गर्ने सम्म सबैको दुख एउटै र उस्तै खालको छ र भोगाई पनि समान छ Info Plus team le bivinna sthan ma pugira yu awaz sankalan gare ko cha. Abo ko kram ma ma yahar lai sohi report dekhao na darfa laakshu. Info Plus Sthaniya chunab nazi ki dae garda pratinidhi haru feri pani thula thula sapana baad dae ghar dailo ma pugira hae ka chan. Dees ma bivinna samay ma bivasta feri yo, netritto feri yo, tara huda khane barga ko bhani परसो विद्या पनि न त दिनचर्या फेरियो न त जीवन स्तर नै ए हुन रामेछापका प्रदीप कुमार श्रेष्ठ गाउँमा पानीको अभावका कारण खेती योग्य जमिन बाझै राखेर तीन बच्चाको भविष्य उज्यालो बनाउँछु भनेर 28 वर्ष अघि काठमाडौँ छिरेका उनी अझै पनि फुटपाथमै कपडा बेच्न बाध्य छन् खाना बसेको भइसक्यो म 28 वर्ष चाल्नु भइसक्यो तर यति गर्दा पनि नुन तेल पुर्याउन धौ धौ हुने गरेको उनी बताउँछन् नुन तेलको भाउ बढिराखेछ भ्याको छैन एउटी बिस बिस व्यापार छैन लकडाउनले समस्या पारिराखेछ जस्तो ठिकै यति मात्रै होइन शिक्षा क्षेत्रको महँगीले पनि उनलाई पोलेको छ एउटाको 50 हजार दिन पर्छ अरु अब पढ्दै छन् कोही कोही अलिअलि काम गर्दै छन् अब के हो त्यतिले भ्या छैन दिन रात घाम पानी नभनी खर्दा पनि बाल बच्चा पढाउन रीड खोज्नु पर्ने बाध्यता रहेको उनको गुनासो छ सर सफर गरेर तिर्नु पर्छ किन पढाउने पर्यो गाउँ पनि पानी छैन पानी भए राम्रो हुन्थ्यो त्यही भएर समस्या नै हामी बस्यो अब यो बाध्यताले बस्यो हो त्यसै बस्यो हैन वर्षाका 77 वर्षीय वृद्ध राजा महेन्द्रको पाला देखि बाटोको एक छेउमा सानो पसल राखेर बसिरहेका छन् दुख जिलो गरेर बाल बच्चा पढाए हुर्काए तर उनीहरू आ आफ्नो बाटो लागेपछि अहिले आफ्नो सहारा यही सानो व्यापार रहेको उनी बताउँछन् यहाँ बसेको महेन्द्र सरकारको पालादेखि हो मेरो व्यवसाय यही हो त्यसैले बाल बच्चा पढाए लिखाए गरे तर बाल बच्चा आफ्नो आफ्नो बाटो लाग्यो मेरो सहारा यही छ अरु केही छैन यी दुई त प्रतिनिधि पात्र मात्र हुन् काठमाडौँका मुख्य चोकहरूमा बिहान खाएपछि बेलुकीको छाक टर्छ टर्दैन भन्ने अनियोल अनुहारमा बोकेर हिन्ने संख्या निकै ठूलो छ 20 22 वर्ष भइसक्यो हाम्रो चाहिँ पट्टी बेचेर चारवटा बच्चा छ ठेडी गारो भइरहेको छ पढाउनेलाई खिलाउनेलाई त्यति हुनु पर्छ त पाइँदैन मेरो अब कुनै बेला समय उठ्दैन त्यही त हो नि पुगेन भने नि अब साथीहरूसँग माग्ने अनि बेलुका बेचेर दिने आशा गरौ अब यो वर्गको मुहार फेर्ने नेतृत्व सबै तहमा आउने छन् त्यसैले आफ्नो मताधिकारको प्रयोग गरौ विचार पुर्याएर आफ्नो प्रतिनिधि छानौ इन्फो प्लस यो मर्मस्पर्शी रिपोर्ट सँगै लागौ अर्को सेगमेन्ट वक्स पप तर्फ आजको वक्स पप सेगमेन्टमा हामीले अस्ट्रेलिया जाने विद्यार्थीहरुको बढ्दो क्रेज सँगै विद्यार्थीलाई सक्दो जानकारी दिने हिसाबले नेपाल आएका अस्ट्रेलियन शिक्षण संस्थाका प्रतिनिधिलाई हामीले नेपाली विद्यार्थीले अस्ट्रेलियामा के कस्तो गरिरहेका छन् भनेर प्रश्न राखेका छौ उनीहरुको कुरा जस्ताको तस्तै जुम पढेका विद्यार्थीहरु नेपाली विद्यार्थीहरु धेरै युनिभर्सिटीका टपरहरु भएका छन् आजसम्मको रेकर्डमा नेपालबाट गएका अस्ट्रेलियामा गएका विद्यार्थीहरु 
95% success by Kasan. Junu de Silero Gai Kasan, Tinir success by Kasan. Well, uh, Nepalese students are uh, doing really good. So we can see that some of the Nepalese students they are, are doing very good in their career in Australia. And I would say the Nepalese market is really good and uh, they are performing really well in the, when they are going to the uh, job sector and when they come to the studies. They're performing well as well. Nepal always has been a big market for Australia, right? And there are many students that I have uh, found myself like they are doing really good because even in my campuses, I can find uh, my Nepalese students uh, being the you know the advisor, the student ambassador. They are supporting other students, even they are tutoring other students. Student compared to you know with those students, I I feel very happy to say and proud to say that yeah, these are the students who we have sent. Students from Nepal are really used to working very hard, whether it's putting in effort for their studies or even when they go there and start doing part-time jobs, you'll find that Nepali students are the most sincere ones, even at work. So I think having those kind of students, you know, who study also and at the same time manage their jobs and don't have any other history, or, you know, any they're not involved in anything apart from studies and work, which is a good thing for Australia as well. Is one of the key markets for us. So that is one. Nepali students have been academically strong, they perform well, and, and, and even like post academic programs and all, they have been working in the industry, so they have been performing well there. It's all about, you know, like bringing in diversity not only to the academic but to the professional uh, circles also, you know. So that's that's how industry welcomes them. So it's very important for us to do that. That's what I'm saying. So Nepali students are one of the creative ones actually. If you if you try and see the South Asian market. I think that the performance has never been an issue at Nepal. Not not at the UW. I don't know about other universities, frankly speaking, but University of Western Australia, we haven't come across where they have not been able to uh, you know perform or they have find it challenging. They are very restricted. They restrict themselves to speak. And if that's, you know, if they develop that skill set, it's not that they can't speak, it's just that they are hesitant to speak. So they probably will be very adjusted in their own group, and, uh, but they are hesitant to make uh, friends with other nationalities. Info Plus. यो प्रसंग आजका लागि यति नै अब लागौ आजको विशेष कुराकानी तर्फ आजको कुराकानीमा हामीले समसामयिक विषय समेट्ने प्रयास गरेका छौं आउनुहोस् आजको यो कुराकानी प्रारम्भ गरौं Info Plus. Welcome to our program Info Plus. Thank you so much Sadiksha and also welcome to you to the Australian Embassy compound. It's great to have you here. Thank you so much for opening your doors for this beautiful interview set up for us today. It is lovely chatting with you. Your Excellency, one of the first things I want to start up with is by just mentioning what a commendable work the Australian government did with the prompt response to the COVID-19, the pandemic, with the borders being shut down um, and taking care of all the citizens who were there and all the international students and citizens who were there as well. But sadly, because of that, a lot of international students who wished to come to Australia were affected and also, um, you know, international or foreign studies contributes a large percentage of the Australian GDP. And I really wanted to know during this particular time, how were the universities and colleges in Australia affected? Yeah, listen, thank you for recognising the, the work that the Australian government did very early on to provide a very safe environment for everybody who was inside Australia, including our international students. Right. Obviously, the pandemic, as it has everywhere around the world, very badly affected many people in our country, not just Australian citizens, but people who were inside the country, international students who were continuing their studies. So a difficult time for everybody, and I do offer my deep uh, commiserations to people who've been affected. So very tough for um, Nepali students who were both in the country and those who were trapped outside. A frustrating time for people and a worrying time for people. But the government worked very hard to provide supports. And so our federal government, our state governments and our universities all worked hard to put new measures in place to support the international student population. Um, in addition, the government provided supports to the education providers uh, and that also helped to get people through what was a remarkably difficult period. And now that the borders have opened, Your Excellency, how is the post-pandemic situation like in Australia? 
Well, I guess I would be careful about saying post-pandemic. I think that we're all still navigating some difficult times. Um, the infection rates are definitely way down in Australia. Our vaccination rates are very high. We're looking at vaccination rates of around about 95% fully vaccinated in most parts of the country, which means that now that we are welcoming students back into the country, because our borders did open uh, to international students on the 15th of December, 2021, and to all people uh, in February this year, we're now able to offer a really safe environment and our health systems have been proved second to none so that as we welcome people back, we're able to say that we can offer a really safe environment. Things are starting to move forward. We are we're learning to live with the pandemic uh, in Australia as we are in Nepal and in other countries around the world. And I'm hoping that now we're navigating through to a much easier time for everybody. Yes, I definitely hope that there will be a time when we say that we've actually put the pandemic behind, behind. us, right? Yeah. And uh, so, so like you mentioned, you know, mid-December when the Australian borders opened, I'm sure many, many students and parents were ecstatic about the situation. And now that there is a big, big surge and a backlog also, all these students mm. were just waiting and waiting for the borders to open. And now that it finally did mid-December, like you mentioned, in 2021, there's also a huge rush. At a time like this, how does um, Australia filter the students when it comes to quantity versus quality? Of course, we're always after high quality students and I would encourage any of your viewers who are considering uh, applying to be students in Australia to keep in mind that we have very robust visa arrangements in place. We scrutinise applications very carefully. I do encourage all prospective students to work through reputable agents if they're, if they're working through agents to make sure their documentation is accurate, that it's in order, that it's current. Um, we do want to make sure that anyone who applies is presenting their best possible application and an application that is uh, complete with bona fides so that we can welcome them into right. Australia. Because if there is any problem with the documentation, students will be filtered out and they won't be able to enter the country. And also a lot of students, Your Excellency, now, you know, Australia has always been the number one destination when it comes uh, to Nepali students as well because of two predominant reasons. Number one, definitely being quality education, fantastic quality education, and the number two being uh, job opportunities, right? But post-pandemic, there's sort of this confusion that students have that, oh, when we now go to Australia, will we still get the opportunities that the students before us got? You know, So what is the job opportunity scenario like for international students in Australia currently? So the good news is that right at the moment, the job opportunities are even greater than they were pre-pandemic. Um, because we've had a two-year period where we haven't had many, for example, backpackers coming to Australia who often get involved in the casual workforce right. in Australia, um, there is in fact um, a lot of opportunities in the casual work sector such that right at this point in time, the government has changed its uh, offerings of temporary work, of work, casual work for students. Previously, students were allowed to work up to 20 hours a week. At the moment, they can work unlimited hours in Australia. This could change. It's a temporary measure while we don't have a lot of people right. in the casual workforce, um, but it does present new opportunities to Nepali students. What I would say is your first obligation is to yourself and to get a great quality education. Do not sacrifice your academic success for the sake of work. You're in Australia to, to really make the most of that education opportunity. Of course, the work experience, being out in the community, experiencing all aspects of life in Australia is also important as a broad education. But the first priority should, should be your academic studies. Very rightly said, Your Excellency. I think a lot of students sometimes get sidetracked because of a lot of things, but they're there to get quality education and to get a really good high quality degree in the first place. Um, Your Excellency, another thing I really wanted to ask you was because of this surge and this backlog, mm -hmm. a lot of students are finding it very, very difficult to get timely appointments for the panel of doctors and their biometrics. Many students are even worried because their classes, their semesters have already started in Australia while they're still stuck waiting for that appointment date. How are things being managed in this aspect? 
Yeah. And I, I acknowledge it's a very difficult situation at the moment. And um, I do offer my sympathy to students who are caught in this situation where they're having difficulty organising biometrics and medical appointments. We're keenly aware of this situation. Um, I talk to my colleagues in our Department of Home Affairs about this frequently. And there are new measures coming into place to deal with uh, the backlog and the very um, high numbers of applications. I guess we were all caught by surprise at the, how quickly there would be a rebound in interest in travelling to Australia. On the one hand, it's really pleasing and we're so delighted to welcome students back in their usual numbers. On the other hand, this has meant that there's been a dramatic rush of people applying for visas, yeah. applying for their biometrics and doing their medicals. So I've been working with um, some of our medical service providers at the IOM um, to uh, organise that they're putting on additional doctors so that they can deal with the medical backlog. And in the same way, um, at VFS, where the biometrics are captured, there's another kiosk being put in there. So we're taking practical measures to deal with the backlog, but I do ask for people's patience and forbearance. It's a difficult situation. We will catch up as quickly as we can with the level of interest in coming to Australia. I think this is also a positive news for a lot of students who are wishing and hoping for the same, I think, quick measures to tackle this backlog so that a lot of students who really want to get started on their Australian journey could do so in time as yeah. well. Your Excellency, um, you know, we also do Journey to Australia and mm. we're soon doing the fifth season of Journey to Australia where we visit Australia, Australian colleges, universities, talk to Nepali students who are studying there and their experience. So in this fifth season, is there anything in particular you'd want to see or what are your thoughts about it? Well, first of all, I'd just like to say huge congratulations on Journey to Australia as a remarkable series that is providing such valuable information to students, to their families and to others about opportunities for study in Australia. It's been a fantastic series and I know um, my predecessors have been pleased to be involved in the first four um, of the series. Um, great that series five is about to commence. Um, I think this is such a critical time to be uh, providing this sort of information. The situation in Australia has changed over the past couple of years, as we all know. And what I think is important to focus on is the shift away from the difficulties that everybody has encountered over the past two years to the positives. What is the silver lining in the cloud of the pandemic? Well, um, the Australian government has provided around $1.5 billion over the past two years to student welfare um, to support international students in Australia. The government has provided around $90 million in support to education service providers to improve their offerings of services to students and to improve innovation and research. So students who are going to Australia in this, let's call it post-pandemic <laughs> period, are actually going to even stronger, higher quality education providers. They're going into a situation where supports are even greater for them, where we've worked through such immense challenges and difficulties, but come through in very positive ways. And so now I think there are a lot of opportunities for Journey to Australia to highlight about the additional offerings and the additional opportunities for Nepali students interested in a high quality, world-class education in Australia. So I'm grateful to you for providing um, a, a way for students to hear more about what life is like on the ground in Australia. And I look forward to seeing this new series. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, for your time and your wonderful words of wisdom. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure to talk to you today. Info Plus. Info Plus le samete ka bishay ra samete nu parne prasanga ko baare ma hami lai feedback pathaun de garnu hala. Hamro thegana yes prakar rahe ko sa. Yehi shukrabar hune sthaniya toha ko nirvachan le desh ke muhar fir na sakne netrutu dina sakus bane aasha rakdei aur ko hafta. Australian Trade Key Senior Trade and Investment Commissioner Monica Kennedy Sangaku Ek Bishesh Kurakani Hami Lera Upastit Hunetong. As a co episode batter, Moprostota Sadiksha Shrestha Sanga, some Purna Info Plus Unit like Bidadin Host, Hosta Namaskar. Info Plus for genuine information.